I'm glad that you asked, Steve. Our show it is the best. Thank you very much. Great, Great way to start. Well, Miguel, thank you for joining Mox TV Talk. It's wonderful to have a quick time to chat with you. Mate, I've just sat in on a bit of the living room rehearsal. It's good to see that you don't take life very seriously. Oh, as serious as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, does, um, how does this TV opportunity come about for you? Because obviously you're a chef, you're a man yep. that's worked very hard in the kitchen. There you go. How does this progress into lifestyle television? Well, pretty amazing. Like, um, like the reason mainly that I start focusing my career in TV was a family reason, even if it's a different reason. I got a baby girl and I used to run a restaurant and I used to start working seven in the morning and I used to finish working at 12 o'clock at night. So having a restaurant, working for the media when the WTFN job came up, mm -hmm. and having a family is a really hard way to have a life. You can have two jobs, but you cannot have three jobs. It's really hard. It's really hard, okay? So, so uh, I sold the restaurant when the opportunity with 10 came up, and it's been every day. It's, uh, uh, don't take it for granted one second. It's an amazing experience. I just love it. I just feel that I fit really well with Chris, Barry, and, uh, and Amanda. It's just amazing. And it's, yeah, every day I learn every day. I'm a chef, as you say. I know a professional TV people. It, is that a profession? TV people, yes. I'm not really a professional of the industry, but I love the whole interaction with the, my colleagues and the interaction with the camera. I always feel when I'm talking to the camera that I'm talking to one of my best friends or one of the members of my family or somebody that I really like and that's why I do it. I love it. Well, and, and that's a key thing because we see this vibrant, enthusiastic uh, Spanish Australian on our screens yeah. and in real life that's just who you are, isn't it? That's a natural outpouring of well, essence. Well, my sense, I'm glad that you noticed. <laughs> my sense, lots of saffron and lemon, <laughs> plenty of garlic and parsley. And the thing is, I believe from the outside, when I look at the TV industry, mm. I believe the people is most successful in TV is the people they are themselves. Mm. Sometimes I see, because I watch a lot of TV as well now, I see how people in real life is not the same that when they are in camera. And I believe it's a really hard combination, how to trying to be somebody else when you are in camera. So for me, when I'm doing the show, or when I'm working and doing one of my stories, or when I'm researching, or when I'm uh, cooking in the show, I'm just trying to be myself and have the camera with me as uh, someone else. And you know, it works very well for us, and it's fantastic. Now you're still uh, applying your trade, as it were. Like you obviously have, yeah. have this massive TV career that makes you a superstar. A superstar. Please, you're going to make me blush. <laughs> Stop it. But you're also cooking uh, professionally still outside, just keeping your hand in, in the mm -hmm. game. How do you find that that balances out, given that you're now able to, to chef on your own terms? Hey, it is amazing because, you see, I could not just not cook because I love what I do. Cooking is like my life, you see. And that's because cooking is why I'm here as well. So... Because cooking is why I grab in the morning and I live every day, because I love ingredients and stuff. But from this point where I am now, I can decide when I want to cook, how I want to cook, yeah. and I can just take cooking to a different level. You know, to be a chef is something so big. A chef is not just the person that cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. A chef is a person that can help somebody else to write a recipe, or a chef is somebody that can advise somebody else how to open a restaurant or how to cook in a special event. Or, you see, I believe that cooking in my life now is much, is much, much complementary because it let me have a life as a family, mm -hmm. and it's nothing more important for me than my little girl. Yeah. So I no sacrifice. If I had to choose between cooking and my little girl, I didn't want to make a choice. So this way, working for Channel 10 and WDFN, it works perfect for me. So I can have everything that makes me happy. If you're not happy, what is life for? Yeah, absolutely. And I have plenty of that <laughs> to keep everybody. Do you find that, um, you know, then when you're away from the camera, at home with your family, and, and you mentioned you know, your mm -hmm. lovely child and, and your wife, spending time with them, is, is that just, I just want to just calm and relax and just be with them or is it, I, I'd still like to have my friends come over or how? Oh no, I never, I, I don't know what that word means, calm and relax. <laughs> like, I was born hyperactive, I don't know, I sleep like four hours a day and like <laughs> full of energy. But you see, 
I still, in my house, when I cook, everybody always comes for lunch. It's amazing, not for dinner. I got a big extended family in Australia. My mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my stepmother-in-law, uh, my wife's sister, my this boyfriend, my little brother. So when I cook, everybody comes home. <laughs> so it is amazing how my life wouldn't be the same without the support of my family. And I would never jeopardize or sacrifice that for being successful in something else. And I believe focusing in that is going to make me who I am today. And I would never change it for anything. What TV do you like to watch? What TV I like to watch? You see, I'm respecting my wife very much. I'm just in love with Sofia Vergara. <laughs> you see, I watch Modern Family in my iPhone, in YouTube. I know, like, I'm a really healthy stalker. I'll just look in, in Twitter and... Because, you know what? It's not because she's just stunning. It's just because I feel really identified with him. You see somebody that looks beautiful and has got a funny accent, mm. it really makes it not how she looks like, just because who she is and how she is. And that's my favorite TV. I know I watch a few cooking shows as well. I like Gordon Ramsay getting angry and, you know, really technical style like Heston. And I do a lot of lifestyle channel, really focusing cooking shows because I, that's what I like. And I read a lot of cooking books. But Sophia, anytime, you know where to find me. <laughs> anytime. I'm sure we can connect her up with the, you know, Please. Things together. Sweet, just one final finish off. So Miguel, we can catch you every Friday night, 7.30 on Channel 10 on The Living Room. Yeah. Can you give us a hint? What have we got coming up uh, from this week's episode? From this week's episode? Okay. I'm cooking that this week's are coming tomorrow. Okay. I'm cooking with, the, with my idol, the person who makes me love food. And that's my mum. And this is very special because I've not seen my mom for three years and the decision to bring her in the show was a little bit scary, but it is amazing. You're going to see where I got all this from. Yes. <laughs> Mommy is really special and we're cooking a real Spanish recipe. Hilarious. My mom doesn't speak in English. You can't miss it. Excellent, Miguel. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Sophia, I'll see you soon. Uh, now we are lucky enough to find in a break in a very heavy filming schedule. The Silver Fox himself, <laughs> Barry Dubois. Hello, thank you for speaking with us again. No, no problem, enjoy it. Old friend of the show, Barry, we are loving what you're doing with ah. uh, the stuff that you're pulling out here on, on the living room. Uh, and you've got a chance to get your hands dirty again. How are you finding that? It's funny, I, while I'm doing it, I'm loving it. When I get home, it's a long, hot soak in the tub because I'm not as young as I used to be and I'm realising it. No. Yeah, truly. No, that's Don't let looks deceive you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, but you, you know, you're getting a chance to, to get out and about and, and get on the tools and mm. I think the, the, the good thing of, of, as far as the segment that you do out of the studio is, is a real opportunity to say, well, hey guys, we know that people are keen on renovations, we mm. know that they want to get involved and do some of that stuff yeah. with the right guidance That's and it. the right opportunity to get in. So, hey, well, let's think about and, and the, the planning stuff that you do with the people, that really pays off. How do you find them respond to that? Well, it was one of the stipulations of me coming on the show. I wanted to keep it real. Uh, I wanted to own the renovations and, and see that I was teaching people. Yep. As I said uh, 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 many times, if I see another treated pine post go into the ground with yep. some ready-mix cement, I'm just going to throw up. Yep. You know, that never really happens in the real world. Uh, it's about deconstructing what you're going to construct so punters at home can see it and enjoy it and have some fun with it. Now, in the midst of all this, you're, you're growing, your star is on the incline. <laughs> about all that. All going everywhere. You've also managed to find a bit of time to, you know, get some family stuff going on. And it's a wonderful time because this week on, on The Living Room we get to, to hear a bit more about that, don't we? Yeah, very special uh, time for me. It's funny, even you saying that, it just hits me straight in the throat. I feel the lump come up and I can see their beautiful faces in front of me. My babies, Arabella and Bennett, yeah. uh, twins. They're 12 weeks old today, actually, and uh, incredibly special to me. And, and Leonie, of course. And uh, it's like a 12, 13 year journey, this one. It's... Uh, so they, they were born on the seventh attempt of surrogacy in India after 11 attempts of IVF and uh, six years of trying before that. So, uh, that's a big journey. Pretty special for us, yeah, that's for sure. And next week you get given the car keys. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Sure, it's a, it'll cost plenty, there's no doubt about that. What have you had to do as far as bringing home these lovely bubs that at the moment are, you know, relatively cop bound you know they're not up and getting around too much at four <laughs> I don't know about that mate I'm, I was up at three o'clock in the morning because they were up and then I was up again at seven o'clock in the morning because they were up so they have to be fed they have to be changed uh, 
I'm lucky though, I mean, I'm 52 years old and uh, I think one of the benefits of having babies uh, at that age is that a lot of other things are, are, are under the bridge. It's done. I don't have a lot of stresses in life. I get to enjoy every second. Only last night, as I have every night, I hold little Arabella's head in my hand and look at her and just say, sure, it's three o'clock in the morning, I'm awake and it looks like she's not going back to sleep for another two hours, but is this, is this as bad as it gets? This is unreal. Yeah, yeah. I love it. It's pretty awesome. Isn't it? it is beautiful. Have you had to, or are you planning the, uh, the childproofing of your home? Haven't even thought about that. Um, haven't even thought about that. As you know, I live on a yacht six months of the year, and I can't wait to get them to Europe. Uh, that, uh, so I'm going to have to childproof the boat. We have had little yeah. little ones on the boat before. I am one of those nervous adults that whenever the kids are around, I'm grabbing the edge of the coffee table and I'm jumping, and I'm very nervous. I hate it when little ones cry, yeah. and I hate it even worse when they when they injure, the, you know, yeah. get hurt. Uh, but you know they're going to have bumps and and and, uh, and scrapes, and that'll be all part of that journey. Looking forward to it, quite frankly. Look, it, it'll be a spectacular opportunity, and I'm, there's no doubt that we'll get to see Baz childproofing his home as a part of the living room uh, because <laughs> I do it, and why not? Um, In a couple of weeks, you get to see me create a nursery on the show. Uh, one of the head-to-head -head challenges is uh, James Treble and myself go up and we design. Uh, turn a man cave into a gorgeous little nursery. So that'll be up uh, soon. The passage of time and look at how it affects us. The man cave becomes a nursery. <laughs> My word. <laughs> yeah. We had to strip pistons and engines out of this place to put in a cot. Amazing. Wow. It, 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 it doesn't get more diverse, and I think that's the joy yeah. that we see in the living room, that it's not your cut and dry lifestyle program. We have got you know, the craziness of the Spaniard running around mm. and things and eating wieners and other <laughs> things. Um, yeah, we've got this kind of, you know, uh, renovation challenge that's coupled in with some really practical advice and, and then the, the other stuff we see from Chris and Amanda. My word. Uh, how, how do you find yourself uh, fitting into this? Because they're a very talented bunch and you're oh. the strong, silent... They're incredibly talented and what I love about the show is a couple of things. I love being uh, here for the, for the live show because I can't wait to see what the guys have been doing through the week. I'm seriously, legitimately really interested in what Chris has been up to. He tells a great story. Miguel, probably one of my favourite people on earth. He's hysterical. He's, he, he, he makes you feel good about yourself and he, he, the things he cooks and the challenges he's have are amazing. Amanda, without doubt, one of the most intelligent, witty, funny, most beautiful women I've ever had anything to do with. Really enjoyed and can't wait to sit beside them on the, on, in the lounge room, in the living room. Well, you guys are looking great on telly and it, it, it translates really well, that live element when you guys are there on the couch and, uh, and we see that every Friday night now, 7.30 on, on 10. I love it. I know that others are. Thank you very much again for speaking with Mox TV Talk, Barry Dubois. Pleasure, Moxie. Thank you, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Now, the rumours are true. We get to move on to the prettiest man on television, Dr. Chris Brown. Okay, do not start <laughs> with that. <laughs> mate, thank you so much. Um, How are you? I'm doing very well, mate. Lovely to meet you after you stalking you online for so long. Hey, you're one, you're one tweet away from me calling you authorities, but we didn't get to that point, so That's that was reasonable. fine. Ixnay, Arlott Dawson, Shay. Um, I, wow, we'll cut that out. Chris, we're enjoying uh, a little bit of a different side, to, you know, a new string to your bow yeah. with your work on the living room. Mm. The animals, they, they're lovely and stuff, but travelling, that's kind of fun too. Look, I guess it is a different side, and, and that was part of the appeal of it. I, I still do work as a vet. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are concerned that I, I'm not doing that anymore. No. I, I pretty much Come get off. I get off the plane. I go straight from the airport to the vet clinic. Yes. And I'm not joking. Um, yeah. And so I, I sort of spent half my time in the vet clinic, half the time on the ride with with the yeah. living room. So it, it's an interesting mix. It makes it makes for a very um, very mixed up working life. But but I love it. And and you know you'll find though during the series more and more you're seeing animal stories mm -hmm. with travel. So I've managed to to just sneak Wait, those animals in there so just somehow. Know. Mm. Is this where you thought you would be when you first enrolled for uni? No, not at all. I mean, look, it all started from a drunken night in a pub in Excellent. Sydney. As they yeah. all should. And mum said drink will get you nowhere. Well, she was wrong. Oh, she um, so uh, it, it, was, it was bizarre, and I never really thought that this was something I'd be doing. Um, I mean, I think the, the most I'd ever done in, in, a, in a sort of a, uh, a public uh, sort of way was in the vet review in, in fifth year. I played the role of, of Jerry Springer. Excellent. Um, which was a disturbing uh, portrayal, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> but not Jerry Springer, to give it an animal edge. He was the dairy, he was dairy Springer, oh, as in the cow. Nice. Amazing. Love a good pun. Mm. That's what we live for in uni reviews. It's true. 
So, you know, and, and you're still working hard, as you said, as a vet, mm. doing all those sorts of things. Um, with the travel stuff, I mean, yeah. it, it, there, there's responsibilities at work, and they're obviously very understanding that Chris has to go to Nicaragua or somewhere next yeah. week and do all those sorts of things. Um, are you finding that it is like you just you're drawn back to to to, uh, to the clinic that you just go right? I'm fit, I'm done, and I'm, it's all been fun doing the tourist thing, but now I have to go back. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's funny, you know, that I think the more time I spend away from the clinic, the more it, it, it really reinvigorates my passion and it makes me realise that that is what I'm here to do. Uh, um, and it's, it's funny that the crew often laugh because we'll be in you know, Abu Dhabi and walking down the street and I'll see a dog 100 metres away and I haven't seen a dog for, for a week and so I'll run over to it and just, we just spend quality time together, yeah. which looks weird. Yeah. Um, and the dog goes away and tells us, this weird dog yeah, from Australia just yeah. came up to me. Yeah, there's a lot of that. <laughs> um, but we've, we've had some really special animal encounters overseas, um, some involving monkeys, um, that uh, the test results were clear, don't worry. <laughs> They're not yours? They're not mine, and, and I obtained no diseases from them. It was close, though. Um, so, you, look, for me, the chance to go to a new country, these new places around the world, and not just bring back a travel story, but bring back an experience mm. as well. And, and you know, in my spare time, I go and hang out and, and check out you know, what, what animals they have and their wildlife and <laughs> sneak out my little camera and, and you know, just, just take shots. And so it's, it's, a, it's, a great, it's a great job, it really is. Would you consider, and I appreciate that you may not have thought about next steps, but mm. would you consider uh, an opportunity to move into, uh, to fill, not that it's dead yet, but to fill Attenborough's shoes, given that kind of nature documentary opportunity, if that was to uh, appear? Mm. I actually went and saw Attenborough when he was in Australia recently, and mm. I, I, my opinion is that, that no one will ever fill Attenborough's shoes. Reasonable. Yeah, yeah I, I think someone else will come along that will do something different to Attenborough. I don't think anyone can ever rock a blue safari suit like he can no, and talk in quite the way that he does. Yeah, and, and the funny thing is, when you, when you see Attenborough, there's just so much knowledge and so much passion and belief in what he's saying, but he's not your modern-day television presenter. He doesn't project with a lot of energy, or, or, but what he does is enough. And I think it's a really good lesson that you don't have to be loud and, and borderline obnoxious to get noticed. Yeah. You can actually be yourself and, and let, your, let your passion speak, and, and that's yeah. something that, that I really admire with him and the experience that he has and, and uh, the knowledge is, is incredible. The authenticity that you touch on there in, in talking about Attenborough, I think is what we see a lot uh, from the living room in the way that all four of uh, the hosts mm. um, inter interplay with each other on the couch and then you know in their, their various uh, stories and those sorts of things. Do you find that uh, you know it, it can be a bit of a rough schedule? People might go, oh, television, boo hoo, that's hard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it can be quite taxing. I've got to be here for this, and then we've got to sit here and do this for seven hours, and then we have to actually mm. do it and feel like pretend it was the first time we've done it. And yeah. Do you find that that can be? Um, you know, that that's tough sometimes? Or how, how do you get through that? Look, the, the tr the, probably the tricky thing for, from my point of view is that I'll be away on a travel story and I'll get back usually the, the night before we have our studio records. And so I'll have jet lag <laughs> and be in studio and in the ad breaks essentially falling asleep and then have to perk myself up. But I'm sitting next to potentially the loudest, uh, most energetic most tired, uh, immune person I know in the form of Miguel Maestre. So to actually spend time next to him, he's, he's like, he's like uh, having coffee absorbed through your skin, <laughs> just spending time with him. So that, he, he's been a big, um, a big help in, the, in that way. But uh, look, the, the funny thing with, with the cast is that aside from Amanda, I didn't know the other guys. But the moment we first got together, we all clicked, and and, yeah. and not in a in a sort of a cheesy way. We just we just get along, and yeah. we're four very different people. But at the same time, we we just have fun together, and and all bring our own little areas into the show. And and I just I'm really proud of the show. The fact that it is, it's a bit of a quiet achiever. Yeah. Um, but what it does, I really believe it does it does well, and and it's giving that that whole lifestyle genre a, a different look, yes. uh, but a look that I think is is the way of of the future. Absolutely, and it's really fallen into a, an opportunity with there being no lifestyle mm. on Friday night, and that's been a tradition for Australian television mm. for over 15-ish years, yeah. uh, if we think back in the day, and, and to have this come on and, and for what uh, the living room offers on 10, uh, it's nice and it's relaxed, it's an easy way to get into your weekend, mm. you can go, yeah, we'd like to go there, darling, nudge. 
Mm. Uh, or, yeah, how about you get out and build that thing for us, Nudge? Yeah. Uh, stupid lifestyle television. <laughs> But I think, you know, and that's always been, the, to me, the, the, the funny thing about lifestyle television is it, it, it says what you need to be doing on the weekend with such authority and, and so seriously. But the reality is you get up on your Saturday morning, you don't want to do any of that. So we, we sort of meet you halfway. We, we show you what you can do, but we laugh about the fact you probably won't do it. Um, but the option's there. It, it's sort of a non-binding agreement. Uh, and we laugh at ourselves probably more than anything else. So hopefully that, that is the best way to start your weekend. Now, it can be a... Um a, a dangerous role being the travel man when you have to go out and you have to go to Abu Dhabi. You mm. know, you've got to go uh, and buy that gold ingot from mm. the, the ATM and do those sort of things. Or you have to go to, I don't know, uh, a medieval festival to mm. Gibraltar. Mm. Now, it's coming up and people see it on the show. You copped a bit of a beating, Chris. That's probably fair to say, isn't it? It's more than fair to say. <laughs> I think it, it was it was extraordinary. I. I never thought that being a travel reporter would be so dangerous. I, in, in was it five years of being on Bondi Vet, yeah. I've operated on lions, tigers. Um, They're usually I've, asleep, though. I've been charged by rhinos. Yeah. I have never had so much as a break in the skin. In <laughs> four months of doing the living room, I have nearly broke my neck in massive surf in Chile. I suffered like a, a massive gash in my leg from, from dog sledding. Um, Medieval festival was was a highlight. I was brutally assaulted. <laughs> There's no other way of saying it. I was brutally assaulted by a man claiming to be a 13th century Scottish knight, who truly believed he was. <laughs> I engaged in what I thought was a sword fight, where you just went ching 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 yeah. like this. He brought out a sword that that weighed a re- conservatively about 15 kilos, and tried to open me like a tin can. <laughs> And it's only when you see it back that you realise he wasn't mucking around. I, my helmet that was made out of steel had a dint in it that was a centimetre deep. I have a cut on my head still yeah. that from this sword fight and I was wearing armour. It was unbelievable. Well, now you'll know for next time, won't you? Well, there will be no next time. <laughs> Let's make that very clear. Where is your sense of adventure, Chris? It was there, but it left. It was left in a pool of blood on a field in Queensland. You get a helmet that now has a big dint and gash in it. Um, Chris, are we going to see any more of the adventures of Bond on there? Absolutely. Good. Yep. Yep. So we're um, we're still working away on that, and uh, look, it's it's still it is still my passion. There's no no doubt about that, and. And uh, we were going to have some interesting things coming up. If nothing else, mate, I know of a, a wife and two small children that will be very pleased to hear that. That is a family tradition at our joint. Because yep. uh, they just love seeing the animals and they're, yeah, they're all very sympathetic to that. Plus, uh, well, my wife says she likes watching the animals. I don't seem to see the connection, but whatever. Um, <laughs> Chris, Friday nights uh, on the living room, 7.30 on 10, we get to enjoy what it is you do and do it so well. You get to enjoy my suffering is well, what you get to enjoy. Of, and you do that so well. Isn't Thank it? And you don't mind whipping about it either. It's a big compliment. Know. Wow. Sookie <laughs> No, it, we're enjoying uh, what you do with the other three guys, uh, but particularly, you know, you're out and about. It, it does bring a different edge to, to travel reporting, and it's just been wonderful speaking with you. Thank you, Thanks, Dr. Steve. Chris Brown. Don't worry, it's my pleasure. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. I've collected the full set now. Oh, you've got all of us. We Absolutely. should release a set of bobbleheads. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? The be. Miguel one would never stop moving. That's true, and the Barry one would sell out of the ballpark. Oh, and Chris would have to, you'd have to get a bigger box for Chris's lantern jaw. That's right, it would be like this. Yeah. Bobblehead squid. Yeah. Hi, Amanda Keller. Hello. Thank you so much for speaking Stephen, it's a pleasure. Now, Amanda, you are quite possibly one of the hardest working women in show business in Australia, yet you make it look so effortless. Oh, aren't you sweet? It, it, it's effortless in, if it's not stressful. I've discovered that over the years. I like to be busy, but I don't like to be stressed. Good. So I do breakfast radio at WSFM in Sydney, and I love that job, and that's always busy and... Um, and creative and all of that, but it's not stressful. And then doing this show isn't stressful either. The one thing I am missing out on is probably my afternoon face planting snooze. Mm. So I just take it out on my children, so that's all right. Get to bed. I said get to bed, bed! I'm sure it would get really hard too when the boys' cycles get in sync. They would be difficult to deal with. Oh, can you imagine? Wow. Those men are more hormonal (laughs) than I am. And, I, and even when I'm probably about to going to go through the change, yes. they will probably still be more hormonal. Barry's tearing up at the drop of a hat, and that's oh. just about his kid. I know. Isn't he a sookie? Did he cry for you? He's that's such a sookie. Oh, he's lovely. Yeah. He's the easiest man in the world to make cry. <laughs> he yeah, he I is. Just, so tell us who it, oh, I've got a little bit I of know. 
know, I know. He's a funny dude. He's beautiful, isn't he? This has been a really nice experience for me. These are such nice men. Yeah. And, and we've got a very nice rapport. All four of us have just clicked there's a really nice chemistry to us and uh, and I think a lot of shows fight to get that chemistry and yeah. for us it's it's uh, we start with the chemistry and if the rest of the show is okay then that's great because the, the human side of it works very well I think I, I was lucky enough to sit in on the rehearsal before and, and just see you guys preparring for the show talking about underpants so the flatulence things. yeah oh. underpants Chris's scar that he's very cut up oh, I know I know that man needs to just harden up I know <laughs> Not like funny that. <laughs> uh, you guys working well together, even in that rehearsal scene. Like we sometimes wish there weren't any stories, and we could actually just spend the whole show just actually talking to each other. Oh, like, like a view esque kind wouldn't of. Wouldn't that be great? And say, so, I don't just get Chris to talk us through his yeah. stories. Don't have, don't don't show. Just tell us about them. Barry, tell us about the babies. He'll get yeah, some. Yeah. You know, Miguel, what do you feel like cooking tonight? I re we could talk easily for an hour. Easily. It's a shame that we have to sort of intro those stupid stories. You could sit in a semicircle. Oh, in a yurt. <laughs> some, kind of, some geometric shape. Yeah. Who knows? Geodesic dome. Oh, goodness me. Get Barry to make one. He could knock it up like that. He would too, you know. How, how are you finding uh, just that extension of your television career? Because uh, those that are of my age group will remember you incorrectly predicting the future um, a little while ago. That's right. It, it, there's a, Where's my flying car? Uh, isn't it funny? There's a man of a certain age who will say, I watched you on Beyond 2000. My son has a friend at school whose father was four awesome. when he saw me on television. That's right. But so I'm really grateful to still be to be working, to be busier than I've ever been. Mm -hmm. At 50, I think it's fan I'm really grateful for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Beyond 2000, it's funny, we never saw the internet coming, but <laughs> hell. But we, you know, <laughs> a thousand stories about smart cards and big suitcase telephones. That's right. Uh, the internet took us it. by surprise. Yeah, crazy, crazy. Yeah, yeah, but uh, that was a great show. I loved that show. And I still meet a lot of people who talk about having to watch, having to watch that when they're at school. Oh, it, it was an education. I, I was lucky that I got to experience some of your career as it happened, but as a consumer, you know, I got to watch you a little bit on the Wonder Worlds and then the Beyond yeah. 2000s and stuff, and, but I also really just fell in love with you. I was living on the Central Coast when you and Andrew Denson did Breakfast on Triple Oh, Air. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, my goodness, that just kept me sane. Yeah, so, oh, that's and nice. And Gibson was lovely. Yeah, but you know, that was a really important time, I think, in, in Triple M's history, because mm -hmm. Doug had gone, Doug Mulray, yeah. and people were thinking, you know, there'd been a couple, people were saying, you know, what's going to happen, and I think when Andrew took it over, People think, oh, he's a bit highbrow, but he wasn't. Andrew's, Andrew's a, a very much an everyman with his comedy, yes. and and it, and people loved that show. And one of the most important days is we were on air the morning after September 11, yes, and yes. I just it was. It, people were waking up wondering if the world had ended, and we. Had, that's like what's. It, but that's what's great about radio. We call it the tribal drum. Yeah. You can't talk back to your television. But people were phoning us saying, "What does this mean?" Mm. You know, we, we're in people's cars with them, we're in their showers with them. That's why our radio is is so wonderful. But that was a really important time in radio. I think um, working there. No question. I, I'm very lucky. A friend of mine. I uh, actually worked as a producer on your show. We spent some time in the House from Hell, actually. The house from Hell? Who was that? Tracy Jean. Oh, I love her. Yeah, she's, she's one of our favourite, mm. favourite people. Will you give her my love? I will. She's married to my best friend. So they're oh, Brett. The yeah. Oh, how cool. Yes. Yeah, Are they in the UK? They're living the life. Yeah, yeah it's wonderful. I'll fill, I'll fill them in. Oh, that's for another later. conversation. Yeah. Oh, fab. No, one of the good things that we get to see you doing, and I'm sure you enjoy it in, in itself, is that you know, Barry builds things. Chris travels. Miguel cooks. You get to go and talk to people I in know. their homes. In their homes. I know it's confronting. You know what? It, and it's we, we're very kind to people. We say don't you know don't don't get anxious about having cleaners in and things. And yet when Florence Henderson came to my place, and I know that we're kind to people, and so they've got a big pile of washing and they've got a cupboard where they've just chucked everything. We're not going to film no. that. But I was so anxious when they came to my home because I'm looking at them thinking, look at those fingerprints all over the wall. And, oh no, I haven't. Look at that. And we've got junk everywhere. Why didn't anyone tell me I'm living in junk? <laughs> so it is. A, it is a very personal thing and people like Troy Casadale and Michelle Bridges they don't normally have people in their houses and they let us go into their houses it's a real privilege actually to rifle through their underwear drawer well, it's a very intimate thing isn't it, it because is. while public figures are happy to stand on stage or on the telly and do and say stuff 
no, your home is is that little castle where yeah. I can choose to let in people. Yeah, that's and right. And help with the rest of the world. And to have cameras come in can be confronting. But yeah, they handle it with just. They do. Fun. Well, they're they're very nice ab uh, about that. That is, and and I the crew. It's a really good crew that we work with as well because they're not in everyone's face. They're friendly and nice, and we don't make anyone do anything they don't want to do. And I think that's got to be part of the deal. You can't feel like you're being invaded. Yeah. Even that Glenn McDonough guy, I mean, he managed to get through. I know. He was nice, wasn't he? What? A most unpronounceable surname ever. But, you know, he'd renovated that house himself. I think he was, and he was very rightly so proud of all the work he'd done. Who says the kids can't amount to anything? I know. Who says that Big Brother will take you nowhere? Right. Actually, I said that. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. Oh, whatever happened to her? <laughs> oh, we should find out. I know. <laughs> Where are they now? <laughs> That's right. Um, Amanda, it, it, every Friday night we get to tune in and enjoy the camaraderie that you four share on the couch uh, in the living room, 7.30 on 10. Thank you so much for speaking with us at it's Box TV Talk. It's been a pleasure. Thank Camera. you. Mwah. Uh, no tongues. That was cheeky. Sorry, sorry. <laughs>